Thank you very much for joining us today. And we are looking at Steve Jobs, who is one of the best, if not the best, uh, business presenter of recent times. And specifically, we're going to be looking at uh, his speech launching the iPhone in 2007. This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. And Apple has been, well, first of all, one's very fortunate if you get to work on just one of these in your career. Apple's been very fortunate. It's been able to introduce a few of these into the world. In 1984, we introduced the Macintosh. It didn't just change Apple. It changed the whole computer industry. In 2001, we introduced the first iPod. And it didn't just, it didn't just change the way we all listen to music. It changed the entire music industry. Well, today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. So, three things. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. Okay, let's pause there for a second. So, there's a couple really important things that we notice here. And again, we're only less than two and a half minutes into this presentation. He already has the audience almost on their feet at this point, just in the first opening few minutes. And even just in the first few seconds, by saying the very first words out of his mouth, this is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Immediately the audience starts applauding. Uh, and again, I just wanna draw your attention to the fact that how, how is it possible, it's possible for many reasons, he's passionate, he's extremely knowledgeable, he's bringing a ton of credibility, obviously to this point going into this presentation, but also he's pausing. When you make a powerful, strong statement that you want the audience to uh, respond to or to have any kind of reaction. And it doesn't have to be applause necessarily. It could be a silent reaction. Maybe, they just, maybe you just want them to just sit there and nod and to say, oh, that makes sense. I agree with that. Whatever reaction it is, you have to pause and allow the audience time to have that reaction, right? So a classic mistake that people make, whether they're telling jokes or whether they are um, you know, making some ambitious, powerful statement is they just rush through it and they don't give the audience time to react and to let that statement or that humor or that ambitious concept, uh, to let it sink in. So pause, take your time and creating that emotional experience is much more important than you rushing through your content. Certainly notice his body language and his hand gestures. If you notice when he talked about uh, revolutionary products that changes everything, his, his hands go like this. They expand outward slightly. He has relatively muted, uh, sober body language. He's not a really ecstatic 
person or a really hyper high energy kind of presenter. He doesn't have to be, uh, and you don't have to be either. Um, but, uh, but nevertheless, the body language is following through and, and it's congruent with the verbal content of what he's saying. He is really doing a great job in building up the history and the background of Apple to this point. So before he even speaks to the iPhone or in a general sense, what is the iPhone? He is, and he hasn't specifically named iPhone just yet, but before he even gets to the details of the product, he's talking about uh, the history of Apple, the Macintosh computer, the iPod. So he's reminding and reinforcing for the audience all of the revolutionary, amazing things that Apple has done. Not only does that hype up the audience and get them excited and applauding, uh, but it also, from a credibility standpoint and from a content standpoint, it is now setting up a frame where uh, the iPhone is going to be placed within that frame, right? So, so the iPhone is a revolutionary product of that class, as he specifically said. Notice also these simple, powerful ideas. You know, if you want to induce an emotional response in your audience, you want to be able to speak to powerful, ambitious, high-level ideas. And you want to be able to incorporate those into your presentation. I think a lot of times presenters and public speakers make the mistake of trying to play it safe, trying to be vanilla, or, uh, or just generally low-key in their content, in their ideas. And that's a mistake because if you want to have that emotional impact on your audience, which in most cases is something that you do want, um, you're not gonna have that emotional impact if you're playing it safe. So when you get really ambitious and powerful in your ideas, uh, that, that makes a difference. So he talks about revolutionary products, right? He talks about changing the entire music industry, <laughs> which is what the iPod did, right? And it's not just hot air. I mean, there's a lot of truth to that. You know, you could probably debate or quibble with that concept. Did it really change the entire music industry? I think most people would agree with that statement, at least to some degree, to, on some level. Um, and then also notice the visuals. Notice the slides and the images uh, that, he is, that he has on the screen there. Uh, that's very important. You know, we're going to see as we continue these simple, strong, powerful visuals. And there's a variety of different types of images that he's using here. But uh, notice that because you don't want your visuals or your images on your slide deck to take away from the words that you're saying. You want them to reinforce your words and to support your words and to support your presentation, to not take attention away or, or distract the audience, which is a very common mistake that people make. Uh, so again, conversational demeanor, taking his time. Let's continue. An iPod, a phone, <laughs> and an internet communicator. An iPod, <laughs> a phone. <laughs> Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> no. Actually, here it is, but we're going to leave it there for now. So, before we get into it, let me, uh, let me talk about a category of things. The most advanced phones are called smartphones, so they say. And uh, they typically combine a phone plus some email capability, plus they say it's the internet, sort of the baby internet. 
in the one device, and they all have these plastic little keyboards on them. Uh, and uh, the problem is that they're not so smart, and they're not so easy to use. So if you kind of make a you know, business school 101 graph of the smart axis and the easy to use axis, phones, regular cell phones are kind of right there. They're not so smart, and they're you know, not so easy to use. Um, but smartphones are definitely a little smarter, but they actually are harder to use. They're really complicated. Just for the basic stuff, people have a hard time figuring out how to use them. Well, we don't want to do either one of these things. What we want to do is make a LeapFrog product that is way smarter than any mobile device has ever been and super easy to use. This is what iPhone is. Okay? So, we're going to reinvent the phone. Now, we're going to start with a revolutionary user interface. Is the result of years of research and development. And, of course, it's an interplay of hardware and software. Now, why do we need a revolutionary user interface? I mean, here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the BlackBerry, Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And what's wrong with their user interfaces? Well, the problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there. And they all have these control buttons that are fixed in plastic and are the same for every application. Well, every application wants a slightly different user interface, a slightly optimized set of buttons just for it. And what happens if you think of a great idea six months from now? You can't run around and add a button to these things. They're already shipped. So what do you do? It doesn't work because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. OK, so let's pause there. So again, a lot of really good uh, techniques here. Notice, again, the ambitious, powerful language. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. Simple easy to digest, easy to process, and extremely powerful. And it's a, it's a climax that he's built up towards in the preceding minutes. Right? Again, look at the timestamp here. It's only six minutes so far. And he already has us on the edge of our seat. And he's also gone through a lot of content in the span of six minutes. It goes to show how much territory you can cover in a relatively short time frame. Uh, not just the content, but also the emotional uh, journey as well. He shows the product and then he takes it away. He says, oh, actually, here it is, but actually we're, we're going to take it away for now. So that's teasing them, which was a, a classic Steve Jobs move. Uh, teases the product, the big product that he's building the anticipation for, and then takes it away. So this increases the anticipation and the buildup and the emotional investment in the audience even more. Uh, notice also the moments of humor. So he has an image of like a, a silly looking iPod with a dial uh, phone thing on it. So that makes everybody burst out laughing. Uh, he's having fun with it is, is, is what's happening there, right? Uh, introducing some fun, some insight, some specific dense informational content, and then also emotional kind of revolutionary language. All of these different elements are coming together to make this an extremely powerful and impactful presentation. Uh, notice the animations. Notice the uh, visual aspect. Let me, let me just go back here. There is a very simple tactic here, right? So he shows, and by the way, notice the usual suspects, right? So anybody who, who remembers uh, Casablanca, I guess. Uh, will, will resonate, and, and that's like a, a cultural reference. Um, so you have these images of these major competitors, and then he just simply clicks and draws attention like that to the lower 40, as he says, the, the buttons and the controls on these devices. Uh, simple animation, but it really helps to draw the audience's attention and control and manage the audience's attention 
exactly in line with the message that he's trying to get across. Um, this is all obvious to us at this point in 2021, right? Of course, we want to have a touch screen. You know, we want to have a easy user interface. But again, go back to the context of 2006, 2007. This whole concept was revolutionary. It was really a fundamental idea at that time. This is why it's so good to go back and look at uh, presentations from that time and to look at this specific one because it wasn't obvious to people that you should have a device like this that is completely touch screen and completely smooth, right? That wasn't an obvious thing. So Steve Jobs is spending probably at least a minute just going through the details of that specific problem because it's not obvious to the audience, right? Most people at that time would look at these devices, they would say, well, these devices are functional, it's fine, right? But he's specifically articulating the problem with this existing paradigm. You know, what happens when you ship, you ship the device, it's gone. You can't run around and change the buttons anymore. What happens if you develop a new application? It's a big problem. So, um, so that's an important thing he's talking about. And again, simple, if, you know, some of these slides have text on them, only text, but it's still simple, powerful text. It doesn't take a ton of attention uh, from the audience away from Steve Jobs, the presenter. It just serves to reinforce what he's saying. Revolutionary user interface. Um, and so, yeah, so then he finally reveals the, 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 uh, the term iPhone there back here. Um, he just, it's a smartphone, you know, he just talks about it in general terms. Um, and he talks about the current market for smartphones, et cetera, QWERTY keyboard. But this was the other major thing I wanted to draw attention to was the business school 101 graph, <laughs> which is again, a moment of humor. Um, this is a great idea for you to think about in your own presentations, creating a narrative, creating a frame. That's what he's doing here, right? He has boiled everything down into a very simple framework, smart versus easy to use, right? And so that's all for the purpose of setting up the iPhone, right? Because the iPhone is gonna be both smart and easy to use, but uh, before he gets to the iPhone specifically, he introduces the current marketplace and where the current devices fall on this axis. And again, this is not complicated language. Smart, not so smart. Easy to use, hard to use. Very simple. It's a very simple framework. So it helps the audience to understand his thinking and his philosophy and his narrative. So it's very straightforward in that sense, and therefore it's very powerful. Okay? Let's continue here. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. Well, how do you solve this? Hmm. It turns out we have solved it. We solved it in computers 20 years ago. We solved it with a bitmap screen that could display anything we want, put any user interface up, and a pointing device. We solved it with the mouse, right? We solve this problem. So how are we going to take this to a mobile device? Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. A giant screen. Now, and again, notice, I just want to pause here, because notice the audience reaction in this moment, right? You, you have to take yourself back to 2006, 2007, and how revolutionary of a concept that was, right? and how ambitious of a concept it was. That's what that's what that emotional reaction, that um, audience reaction is coming from. How are we gonna communicate this? We don't wanna carry around a mouse, right? So what are we gonna do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're gonna use a stylus. No. <laughs> no. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away and you lose them, yuck. Nobody wants a stylus. So let's not use a stylus. We're going to use the best pointing device in the world. We're going to use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're going to use our fingers. We're going to touch this with our fingers. And we have invented a new technology called multi-touch, which is phenomenal. 
It works like magic. <laughs> you don't need a stylus. It's far more accurate than any touch display that's ever been shipped. It ignores unintended touches. It's super smart. You can do multi-finger gestures on it. And boy, have we patented it. <laughs> so. OK, so introducing the concept of the, of the touch screen on the phone. Uh, how much of his description there involved the technical specifications of this technology? Zero, right? Didn't speak to how it works or all of the revolution, which I'm sure I'm certainly not a technology expert, but I'm, uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of really revolutionary technological advancements that go into that particular feature and that functionality. But he's, he's not talking about how it works. He's talking about the impact and the payoff of this technology. It works like magic. And again, notice the emotional language. It works like magic. It's phenomenal, right? Big, powerful, emotional uh, verbiage. And uh, you don't need a stylus. It's far more accurate. Multi-finger gestures, right? And then, of course, the humor. We've patented it. Boy, we patented it. Uh, but he's talking about the payoff to the user, right? The actual end result, you know? Think about uh, WIFM, W-I-F-M. What's in it for me? It's all great to have a, a great product, a great technology, a great solution, but what's in it for me as the user? That's what matters. And that's what Apple in general, and Steve Jobs in particular, has always been very good at articulating. So, we've been very lucky to have brought a few revolutionary user interfaces to the market in our time. First was the mouse. The second was the click wheel. And now we're going to bring multi-touch to the market. And each of these revolutionary user interfaces has made possible a revolutionary product. The Mac, the iPod, and now the iPhone. So a revolutionary user interface. We're going to build on top of that with software. Now software on mobile phones is like, it's like baby software. It's not so powerful. And today, we're going to show you a software breakthrough, software that's at least five years ahead of what's on any other phone. Now, how do we do this? Well, we start with a strong foundation. iPhone runs OS X. Yeah. Now, why, why would we want to run such a sophisticated operating system on a mobile device? Well, because it's got everything we need. It's got multitasking. It's got the best networking. It already knows how to power manage. We've been doing this on mobile computers for years. It's got awesome security. And to write apps, it's got everything from Coco and the graphics, and it's got core animation built in, and it's got the audio and video that OS X is famous for. It's got all the stuff we want and it's built right in to iPhone. And that has let us create desktop class applications and networking. OK, let's just pause there. So again, notice the minimalism on the slides, right? Even when he introduces OS X, that's probably the most minimalist slide of all. It's just a big X representing OS X, uh, which, of course, was cutting edge at that time. And uh, elucidating uh, all of the different features of, of the operating system uh, and, and why it's so effective. Notice the, let me just go back here, notice the framing here. Where, you know, how do we think about multi-touch? Oh, it's, a, it's another revolutionary user interface. So it's in the same tradition of the mouse and the click wheel. And that's how he's framing that. It's a very simple, accessible way of framing and helping us to understand the significance of multi-touch technology. And then he's, he made a very critical connection, which is every revolutionary user interface has allowed the possibility of a revolutionary product, right? That's a very powerful connection right there. So 
I talk a lot about alternating between high level concepts, abstract concepts, ideas, trends, patterns, theories, and then low level details, anecdotes, specifics, illustrations. So that's what Steve Jobs is doing here. So he's describing the details of like how multi-touch uh, is impactful, why it's beneficial. And then on a high level, the revolutionary UI, this tradition of revolutionary UIs, how this um, makes revolutionary products possible, et cetera. So those are the main things there. Uh, so this is breakthrough. So then he's talking about the software uh, and, and OS 10. And uh, let's just continue from here. Not all the stuff we want. And it's built right in to iPhone. And that has let us create desktop class applications and networking. Right? Not the crippled stuff that you find on most phones. This is real desktop class applications. Now, you know, one of the pioneers of our industry, Alan Kay, has had a lot of great quotes throughout the years. And I ran across one of them recently that explains how we look at this, explains why we go about doing things the way we do, because we love software. And here's the quote. People who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. You know? Alan said this 30 years ago. And this is how we feel about it. And so we're bringing... Okay. So that last couple comments here before we wrap up today. Obviously, the quotation is extremely powerful in this context. And it's a simple quotation, right? First of all, this is a prominent person in this industry, Alan Kay. I, I'm personally not familiar with that person. I haven't researched him much, but uh, anybody who's in that industry would know who that is. And it's just such a beautiful, elegant, minimalist quote, right? Uh, and so it's a great kind of cap to the end of this 10-minute section, uh, in the opening section of Steve Jobs' keynote here. So this is a great illustration of the high level, right? So he's talked about the specifics of the uh, OS 10 and all the features, the graphics, the audio, et cetera. And then he zooms out high level, you know? The people who are serious about software should make their own hardware. Really big picture concept, but very powerful and emotionally evocative for the audience. Last thing to keep in mind and last thing to notice is Steve Jobs' enthusiasm here, right? And his passion as he's speaking. Uh, whether he's speaking about the inconvenience of a stylus <laughs> or whether he's speaking about the high level concept of software and hardware uh, and Apple's philosophy, there's passion and there's enthusiasm and there's unquestionably there's personality there. Uh, that's a given. But it's that energy and that intense emotion that comes from him that is so significant and that really makes such an impact on the audience. So He's obviously one of the best, if not the best, business presenter of recent times, or maybe of all time. But we're going to leave it there for today. And I look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Thanks a lot for joining, and I'll see you next time.